The broadcast is now starting. All attendees are in listen-only mode. Hi, everyone. Thank you so much for joining us this afternoon to talk about the 2021 CFDA Vogue Fashion Fund. Um, before Allie and I introduce ourselves, um, just some basic ground rules are that we'll go through a brief presentation, but we really want to leave a big chunk of this time to answer your questions. So on the little dashboard that you have on the right side of your screen, just use the questions function and submit ones there, and then we'll go through and answer them at the end. So uh, my name is Lee. I am the Associate Director of Special Projects and Experiences at CFDA. I've been there for six years, and one of the projects I work on is CFDA Vogue Fashion Fund. Allie? Hi, I'm Allie Mitchler. I'm Director of Fashion Initiatives at Vogue. Um, one of the, pro the projects I work on is the Fashion Fund, and Lee is my counterpart at the CFDA. Great. So let's go to the presentation. Um, just some quick history on the CFDA Vogue Fashion Fund. It was established in 2003, um, and it was really meant to be an emerging designer program to help designers with professional development and really propel the next generation of American fashion designers. So since we started, we've had over 160 designers as part of it, and we've given out more than $6.7 million. Some of our outstanding past participants, I'm sure there could be some of you on the line right now, but um, you'll see some of the designers there. We have Telfar, one of our winners with um, DVF, who was a um, judge for a long time. So in 2020, um, actually around the same time last year, I can't believe it's been a year, we were all set to open the 2020 CFDA Vogue Fashion Fund when the pandemic hit. Um, we decided not to open those applications and to pivot to a program called A Common Thread. Um, we were actually able to support beyond our designer network and really support the entire industry. Um, we gave grants to designers, retailers, manufacturers, et cetera, um, through five rounds of grants and we awarded over $5 million to 160 brands. So that being said, this is really a hybrid year. We've had to sort of rethink um, the Fashion Fund program this year in order to reflect our changing times. So the 2021 program will really merge the original mission of the Fashion Fund um, with a common thread to really give back to our designer community while still investing in new talent, um, but will be much more uh, focused in terms of mentorship and funding. So just some background on the old fashion fund versus um, what we're doing for 2021 that's different. Um, in the past, we've done a competition focused program where we had 10 designers that would compete in various challenges along with professional development. Um, but we did have three ultimate winners who received money and mentorship. So for this year, with our learnings from a common thread, we really wanted to strive for creating mentorship opportunities and micro grants for all 10 finalists. So this year, there are no actual winners within the Fashion Fund. Um, all of the finalists would receive funding. All of the finalists would receive personalized mentorship and also professional development. So there's really like a few parts of this program. The first is that personal mentorship that you receive. So if you were chosen to be a finalist, um, we CFDA and Vogue would help pair you with a mentor that can help you throughout the program and hopefully beyond. Um, and they would help determine some business goals that you had for a time period. And with the micro grants that you would receive, you would help complete those goals. The other part of the program um, is more of a community building one. Um, Safety of Oak Fashion Fund was a really special program because the designers were able to get so close and form such a good community with each other. We didn't want to lose that, although the program is, you know, digital and virtual this year. Um, so there are these things we're calling the core curriculum, and those are professional development 
seminars that you'll go through all together as a group. Um, and that way, although we're you know doing it on camera, you'll have some face-to-face -face time to each other. Um, hopefully you guys can form those important relationships and also um, go through professional development that's personalized for this specific class of designers. So we have some exciting additions to the selection committee this year. Um, Aurora James of Brother Valleys and the 15% pledge will join us. We'll have Anna Choma and Mark Holgate from Vogue. We'll have Eva Chen from Instagram. Paloma Alcester, model and activist, Rupal from Sachs, Stephen Cold from the CFDA, um, Sam from Nordstrom will be joining us, who is the Senior Vice President of Designer and New Concepts at Nordstrom. And then um, Mr. Tom Ford will also be joining us. So the program timeline, um, as I hope you all know, the applications for the first phase opened yesterday on March 10th and they will still stay open until next Wednesday, March 17th. The second phase of the applications will open up on March 29th. Um, we hope to announce our 10 finalists at the end of April, and the program will run May through October. And in the next slide, we'll talk more about what those different application components are and what the phases mean. So phase one, which uh, Lee mentioned now is really to confirm eligibility, um, you know, short written application, basically your brand, your brand names and basic financial information. Um, and of course, the areas of business focus that you feel you need development in, which will help um, guide us into who you would want as your mentor to help you through the process. Um, and then lookbooks. And if you have any recent collection videos as well so we get a better understanding of your brand if we're not familiar with you already um, and then phase two is a written application and a more um, intensive look at your um, financials and then a digital portfolio which in the past has been a physical portfolio or a book that is sort of a combination of past collections any press clippings any inspiration it's really your opportunity to be creative um, further financials um, letters of recommendation and then a short video that kind of introduces yourself and your brand um, just saying hi so we can put a face to a name great so that was a quick presentation, you know, um, the, the program, um, there's a lot of components that are similar in terms of the 10 finalists and our selection committee that we've had in the past. There's a lot of things that are different in terms of not doing challenges or having um, winners, the three winners like we've done in the past. Um, but at the heart of it, it's definitely meant as professional development to really further your business and further your brand. Um, we'll still have all you know, the storytelling, although we're not gonna do the possibility of events at the moment, um, we'll make sure you guys are getting lots of support. So I'm seeing some questions come in right now. Let's use this time um, for you guys to submit your questions. Um, we got some first via email. So maybe yeah. we can go through those first. Um, so the first question we got is, can you apply if only currently designing accessories, handbags and jewelry, no clothing? Yes, absolutely. You can apply to the fashion fund if you are any form of a fashion designer, ready to wear jewelry, accessories, shoes, handbags, um, sunglasses, so on and so forth. We encourage you to apply. Um, and then the second question, when will winners be announced? As Lee mentioned, we will not have winners this year. Um, it's really uh, to give back to designers this year in a year that has been exceptionally challenging for many. Right. So, all right, I'm gonna read one question. Ali, I just wanna make sure you see my camera now and I stop the presentation. Yes. Okay. Yes. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Um, so one question we had is, would it matter if I don't have a reserve of money for my fiscal year? It's part of the question, the application. Definitely last year was a loss, um, no revenue. Would this affect my application? Um, no, it would not. We know last year, <clears throat> excuse me, was extremely challenging. 
Um, and there's no financial minimum or cap that is associated with the program. It's really just like a baseline so we can see, um, just get like a brief evaluation of you and your brand and get a better understand of your business. But if you know you have a negative number there or if it's zero, that's okay. You can still apply. I'm happy to take the next one. It says, um, I'm looking at the application now, which is on CFDA.com, everyone. Um, can you specify what it means to be actively engaged in business for at least two years? So this means actively selling your collection. So um, either doing direct to consumer, having wholesale accounts, whatever that is for you. Um, if you're selling on Instagram, of course, that's viable as well, but really um, actually selling the collection. Okay. Um, there is one that says, and, and Ali, I think you already answered this, but just to specify, can a children's apparel and accessory brand apply? Um, the answer is yes. Like Ali said, um, it's definitely not only meant for menswear, women's wear, all categories are welcome. There's another question here. Um, how would you describe the difference between the collection video and the self-introduction video? That's a great question. Um, the collection video is not mandatory because so many presentations were virtual this year. A lot of designers decided to present their collection if they did one um, in video format. So many were on nyfw.com or runway360.cfda.com. Um, we would love to see those. And of course, if you did not do one, that's totally fine and does not affect your application at all. The self-introductory video is really to introduce yourself to the judges panel and say, you know, hi, my name is so-and-so, this is my brand, I design you know, ready to wear whatever that is and just kind of give a, um, brief synopsis on who you are, where you're based, and what your business is. Okay, so you guys are asking really, really great questions in the chat, so thank you. Um, one says, if there are no winners, how many designers will be accepted? Um, so there is no three winners like there has been in the past. We still have the 10 finalists, and I guess if you know, we could say that everybody is a winner out of those 10 finalists this year um, because they do get mentorship and grants, but there is no ultimate winner um, like we've had in the past. Another great question, is this local? Can anyone apply from all over the U.S.? Um, anyone can apply from all over the U.S. Historically, we've had um, applicants from L.A., Kansas, Chicago, um, who have participated in the Fashion Fund, but this year in particular, um, since it will all be virtual, it will be um, even easier to participate because it will mostly be from behind your screen. Right. Um, another great question about, there's a few questions about the um, application phases. So let, um, let me explain that a little bit more. So the first phase of the application um, is a lot shorter. I hope some of you guys have already opened up or started it or submitted. Um, but from those applications, the selection committee will meet and we'll narrow those down to about 50 or so designers. Um, so everybody is notified at the end of phase one um, if they'll be continuing on to phase two or what else we might be able to do for them in the meantime if um, they're not able to continue but we definitely do our best to keep everybody updated. Um, and from phase two, we would be able to notify those people um, if they were finalists. So again, the first phase is very large, gets narrowed down to about 50. After the second phase application is submitted, then we would narrow that down to the 10 finalists. Another great question, is there a percentage of the 10 finalist spots that are for new brands versus previous CVFF participants? There's not. This program this year is really need-based, so it depends on um, who really needs the uh, program right now the most. Um, of course, we will try to keep a healthy balance, but there is no specific number. Um, okay, so one <clears throat> says, would the mentorship opportunities include working with the design team or just one-on-one -on -one with the designer? Um, I, I, this is a good question, but I, I really think the mentorship is meant to be 
more of a business mentorship. Um, like some of those things might be uh, financial strategies, marketing and PR, um, things like that. I don't anticipate that we would have a designer meeting with another mentor's design team. Um, and that's not to say that your mentor needs to be a, a designer. Um, I think a lot of times we actually lean towards someone that's more on the business end, um, but it's definitely meant to be more of a business mentorship. Um, can you give more details on what components should be in the digital portfolio? Um, Lee, feel free to jump in here, but um, it's really your opportunity to be creative. So feel free to put in like your favorite looks that you've done recently, or if someone has worn your look on the red carpet, or you have a specific community that really inspires you, or you personally watercolor your prints, or um, you do them digitally, just anything that can help inform the judges on your process, your inspiration, and sort of the DNA of your brand is really helpful. Um, Leah, I don't yeah. know if there's anything to add to that. Yeah, I mean, I think that is a perfect, um, perfect way to describe it. I always used to tell designers that if they were going to make a coffee table book about their brand, then yeah. to make that. Obviously, this year, you know, you're not going to have to print a physical book, which is the plus. Um, but really just giving the designers like a deep dive and holistic view of what your brand means. And that doesn't always necessarily just mean um, lookbook images. Um, I have a question, uh, which is a great question. It's about the schedule and the challenges. So how will the challenges be broken up throughout the year in terms of scheduling? And how would this different differ from the previous schedule? So the heart of the program is from May until October. Um, within that time period between the meetings with your mentor, um, the professional development, some presentations to judges and check-ins, et cetera, I would anticipate that you're doing something fashion fund related at least once a week, maybe twice a week in some, some cases. Um, so that's, that's the schedule. It definitely is a time commitment, but again, it's a program designed to help your business, but you just need to keep that in mind um, as you are applying that it is definitely a time commitment to be part of Safety Evoke Fashion Fund. Um, in terms of challenges, there's not, a, there's not challenges this year. There are still opportunities um, with the judges face-to-face, -face. there's still presentations with them, there's still like opportunities to be super creative, but it's no longer like, we're gonna give you a prompt and you have X amount of time to do it and then you're gonna do a presentation to the judges. Um, we're really stepping back from that for 2021 and, and just focusing it on the business and, and what we can do for there. I would also say, Lee, that um part of your interaction with the judges will be showing them what you've learned in those past few weeks. So we touched on the core curriculum and, and maybe telling them um, how you've implemented some of those conversations into your business or into your um, you know, way that you manufacture things and just kind of showing your growth throughout the program. Um, how would the mentorship opportunities include working with the design team or just one-on-one -on -one with the designer? So the mentorship opportunities really depends on where you need um, help the most. So if you say, if you apply and you say, I really feel like I need um, support in my design team, I'm you know doing these highly technical things and I feel like I need to hire someone, but it's been a tough year, then you would be put on a track to um, work with a design mentor. If you say, I really need help getting my um, brand out there, I don't feel like I have a really strong press standpoint, we would put you in touch with like a PR or marketing um, mentor. If you say, I need to rebuild my website, I'm trying to switch to direct to consumer, you know, that would be your mentor. So it's really up to you where you need um, the area of growth most. Great. I'm going to just carry on with the mentorship questions. There's two um, that are short and I think similar. So the first one is, who are the mentors? Which is a great question. A lot of people think that they need to choose from a list that's applied, um, and that's not the case. So CFDA and Vogue, based on the applications that you've submitted, um, the work that you've done in those, and conversations that we've had um, with the finalists, 
we would work with you to determine who would be the, the best mentor for you based on what you're actually needing. Um, so there's not a list that you're going to go choose from. It's really based on like a conversation and, and what we think is going to be best uh, for your brand. So that's the one part of the mentorship. Um, and then another question is, what happens if you're not exactly gelling with your mentor? So mm -hmm. good question. I mean, it's like a very real world question for sure. Um, based on what I just said before, um, I hope that we'd be able to compare with pair you with someone that um, you would gel with and that you would feel comfortable with. That said, um, if for some reason, like, you know, something was going on or you guys just were not having it, I'm sure, you know, we could, we could take a look at that and see if we could switch it up, but we can jump, um, we can jump over that bridge when it comes. <laughs> um, what is the grant amount for the 10 finalists? Is it need-based? Um, all 10 finalists will receive the same micro grant. Um, we have not announced the amount yet. So I see um, some more questions related to finances. Um, so again, there's not a financial minimum that needs to be met. Um, it's really just for us to get an idea of your business and um, the size and everything. We've had finalists in the past that had $36 in their account or something, you know, very small. And that is okay. That's okay. That's, that's, you know, re no reason that you shouldn't apply or that you couldn't succeed in the program. So don't let that deter you from applying. What I do think that the judges might want to see is that um, you possibly have some wholesale accounts that you're doing direct to consumer or that you've gotten some press, just some recognition around your brand, I think can be a great swap maybe if you don't have the, the finances in order yet. Um, is the letter of recommendation, uh, should it be coming from CFDA members? Otherwise, in my position, I do not have a connection with other members. No, it definitely does not need to be from a CFDA member. It really can be from anyone, um, anyone who sort of knows you in a business capacity and knows about your brand, but that's not to say it couldn't be you know, a professor from college and they knew about your creative spirit and that this, you know, that this was something that you excelled in, just something that is applicable to um, your brand in the program. So this says, can you apply if you've graduated and are already making sales? Um, technically, you need to be in business for at least two years. I know a lot of people, you know, may have started their business while they're still in school. Um, it's really based on the date of incorporation. So hypothetically, yes. Although I think designers that have succeeded most in this program are probably have a few more years under their belt um, before they are a finalist. How in depth should the impact statement be? Is there a word limit? Um, I would keep it concise and to the point, um, nothing too wordy, but enough that we really get a sense of um, what your goals are. So this is a question um, about if you have to follow the traditional fashion calendar, or is it okay to release your own schedule through your brand? Um, and absolutely, you don't have to follow the traditional fashion calendar. Um, we think that whatever you guys think is best for your brand is great. Um, I think the, the judges might want to see that you're able to do two collections a year. That doesn't mean that you need to do them at the same time as New York Fashion Week or um, another large fashion week, but um, you definitely don't have to release in September. Um. I just lost the question that I was looking for. Oh, if you are not profitable yet, that's totally fine. You do not need to be a profitable profitable brand to apply. That's totally fine. Um, if selected, would you become a CFDA member? At the moment, um, no, it's a different application process. CFDA has a lot of programs um, and membership being one of them, but we do have a different application process for each. I think we're getting a lot of the same questions. Um, this is 
Yeah, just a quick one. It says young American designers. What if you're an older American designer? Um, that is completely fine. We absolutely don't discriminate against age at all. Um, all are welcome to apply. That is fine. If I started selling sometime after my date of incorporation, can I still apply? Yes, that's completely fine. I think you should note that in your application when you founded your brand and when you started actually selling the collection. Um, one says, what are the key criteria you use to evaluate applications in phase one? Um, so phase one, if you haven't gotten a chance to open the application yet, it's fairly simple and straightforward. Um, it's really a time for us to reconfirm that you're eligible and just get some baseline information about your brand. Um, a very important part of that is submitting your lookbooks. And we're just asking for your two most recent lookbooks. It doesn't have to, again, if you don't follow the traditional um, fashion calendar, it doesn't have to be something like that, but we just wanna see your two most recent lookbooks. And um, on that same line, please don't submit line sheets. Um, we really are just interested in the actual lookbook. Um, thanks. <laughs> Can you join again in the future when the fashion fund opens up with a winner? Sure, if this year is not right for you, we encourage you to reapply down the line. But that being said, we do not have a crystal ball. We do not know how this program will evolve. Um, but sure, if this year is not right for you, absolutely fine to reconsider down the line. I think... Uh, sorry, guys, I'm just going through. We've answered a lot of uh, the questions, so I want to make sure we're not missing anything super important that would be helpful for you all. One note I, I see here for the people that join late, um, can you summarize what the 10 finalists received? Is it a grant and mentorship, not a financial stipend? So it, they're micro grants. So historically, there have been one winner and two runners up. Um, where all three receive mentoring and funding. This year, all 10 applicants will receive mentorship and funding. Um, again, it's need-based. So in your application, please designate where you feel you need help the most, which will help guide us to find a great mentor for you. And we will not just assign you a mentor and have that be that. If you're accepted into the program, this will be a conversation that we'll have to kind of help um, figure out where you uh, really need to grow. Um, and we have not announced the grant amount yet. Right. Um, does the mentorship include all areas under the business development section or would it only focus on the three areas selected? Um, that's a great question. I think it's definitely a holistic view into your business. It's not necessarily that it needs to be only on your three top choices. Um, that's really, again, just for to inform us of what some of those areas of business you need that um, you're looking for and, and how we can inform the mentors, but definitely not limited. Can we submit our line sheet for the recent collection? Um, if you have not yet shot the lookbook, sure, that's great. A line sheet is better than nothing. We definitely um, encourage you to just like snap a picture of a garment um, with your phone or whatever's easy for you and send to us in your application so that we can, you know, kind of understand what it really looks like. Um, and just, I wanted to mention something quickly. This, of course, is more of a um, business oriented year to help designers and new creative talent but it will definitely be a creative program. I don't wanna to say too much about the core curriculum yet because it will be exciting, but um, there will definitely be opportunities for you to kind of push yourself as a designer and really take yourself to the next level in different areas of your business. It's, this program is really to give designers tools to get to the next step. Um, you know, many of us who are creative are not necessarily business people and vice versa. So it's really um, to kind of give everyone a balance. Right. 
Um, I'm seeing a few questions about um, the CFDA program, Elaine Gold Launchpad. Um, in 2020, due to the pandemic that was put on hold, I'm not exactly sure what the plans are for 2021 yet, but the, the best way to stay up to date on all CFDA programs is to sign up for the newsletter on CFDA.com, and that will keep you updated um, on a weekly basis on if any applications are opening for all of our various programs. On the application, it asks for our wholesale accounts, but if some of the accounts I have are consignment, should they be counted as direct to consumer? It's not like a hard and fast rule for the application. If that's what how your business is set up, just you know, note that. It's us reading the applications, not like a computer. So any info like that is helpful to us. Um, I had a good question. You mentioned that you would like to see brands that show a financial need. Would you also consider brands that are more established but still need help in taking their brand to the next level? In other words, do we need to show a loss? Um, that's a great question. Um, absolutely not. You don't need to show a loss. Um, if we look at some of our past finalists, it's really been a, a wide array of business sizes that have all been um, part of this program. There's you know, no financial minimum. There is a financial cap though, which is part of the application. Um, and it is that you cannot make more than $10 million in revenue per year. Um, so as long as you're staying below that threshold, then you absolutely are welcome to apply. If I only have one collection produced and another collection in the pre-sampling phase, would you recommend that I wait to apply? It might be a little bit early for you as you're probably still figuring out your bearings, how it's best to produce and kind of like what the DNA of your brand is. Um, I, I would suggest waiting until um, you have a few more collections under your belt. Lee, should we do maybe one or two more? Yes, yes. Um, you guys are slowing down on questions a little bit. So in, unless we get like a big rush right now, we'll do one <laughs> or two more. Um, before we wrap up. So I'm looking through right now. Can you speak about the program period if selected? What level of commitment over what period of time would you estimate we should be ready to commit? Um, Lee touched on this earlier. It's really from May to October. And um, Lee had a good uh, suggestion that you would probably be doing at least one thing fashion fund related a week. Um, probably like a core curriculum seminar or meeting with your mentor or something like that. Maybe thinking about something that you learned in the last core curriculum and kind of figuring out how you can implement that into your business. So again, this is mostly virtual. Um, should there be the opportunity to do something in person that would maybe be down the line, but um, nothing is confirmed yet. Okay, and I think this will be um, our last question for now is, Will there be mentors who are available about the new landscape of retail, direct to consumer, e com, and brick, of, brick and mortar, and mentors who can help you balance a high low price point sales strategy for the long term? Um, yes, definitely. I mean, based on that, if, if you were able to submit that in your applications and really speak further to that and why that's needed in your business, um, that's exactly the sort of feedback that we need for us to help pair you with a mentor. So I really, I really can't think of anything, um, you know, business related or creative re related that we wouldn't be able to help find someone to work with you on. Um, so I think that's completely within reason. So I think that will probably be the end of our uh, session right now. Um, if you guys have further questions, um, please feel free to contact us at cbff at cfda.com. Um, and we also hope that you'll all be applying. Um, if for some reason you can't find the link to apply on cfda.com, again, just feel free to reach out. Um, and we are super thankful that you're joining us today and um, hope you have a great rest of your night. Yeah, thank you all. It's going to be an exciting year um, and we're going to figure it out together. It's going to be really cool. So cool. thank you. Thanks, guys.
Bye.